My name is Kendrick Knowles Jr. and I'm about to show you how to remotely access your Cisco switch and also configure um, something called switchboard port security on your Cisco switch device. I'm going to explain why this command is important and various configuration commands that you can use to harden your access layer in your network infrastructure. To start off, I'm going to basically explain and show how you can remotely access your Cisco switch um, once you know the IP address of course. To do that I'm going to click on start and then run type in cmd and then type in the command telnet and then the IP address of your switch. That will allow you to remotely access your switch. Now some might be saying hey this is sort of overly complicated um, going to telnet typing in I mean going to the command prompt typing in telnet and the IP address so there's sort of a shortcut that you can take. You can create a batch file, which I'm going to do right now. And put all of those entries inside a script. So whenever you want to um, connect to your Cisco switch, you just double click on this batch file and you automatically connect. So I'm just going to use the command at echo off to tell my script to please do not display any of the commands that I'm about to type. Then I'm going to use the command color OA because whenever I write scripts I don't want it to use the same color that the native traditional um, command terminal uses. And then finally I use the telnet command and my IP address. Once I say that I can now test my script by double clicking and it should allow me to remotely access the switch this way. Now that might have been a little more longer than the first one but it was a one time thing. So instead of going to start and run and CMD you could just now double click on an icon on your desktop. Okay I hear the question well why do we have this ugly icon on our desktop? Okay well I don't like it either to be honest. It sort of bothers me and I never keep it there for more than 10 seconds. So what I'll do is create a shortcut and rename the shortcut to Cisco Switch. And now change the icon for this shortcut. So I'll just find a much more eye-friendly icon to look at. Um, this looks pretty cool. Oh, this. Da, 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 da. Okay, this one. And I'll click apply, and there we have it. So it looks a lot more better than this. I can now cut this and bury this anywhere. I definitely won't delete it because, well, I need it to execute my script in the first place. So when I double click on this, good. I'm now able to access my switch remotely via telnet. Put in the command, and I'm now inside what we call privilege exec mode. First, what I did step by step is put in the password. This is the password for telnet access. And then I used the command called enable, and for short, I just put an E in. And this enabled me to access what we call privilege exec mode, or simply enable mode. From here, I can make various changes that I couldn't inside the previous mode. Changes like switchboard port security. Now, we need to understand why we want to secure our switch ports. Let me present you with a scenario. Take for instance you have a network printer in your environment and this printer is easily accessible by public um, personnel who might just come in and sit down with a laptop right next to the printer. Well, if you're thinking security, you might want to think that maybe somebody could, I don't know, unplug the network cable, plug it into their laptop and then gain access to your network and network resources. Well, to mitigate against that, if you had a Cisco switch, then you could now configure what is known as switchboard port security. So you can now tell your switch, hey, I know that port 1 is connected to the printer. So whenever you receive a frame from port 1, always look for the printer's MAC address. If you discover any MAC, any different or any other MAC addresses on the switch port, shut the switch port down because they shouldn't be there. So this is a very, very good command that you will use in security conscious environments. Now, let's get down to it. How do I enable this thing? Well, it's actually quite simple. First thing we do, we go into global configuration mode. And I'll access this mode by typing in the command conf t, which stands for configure terminal. Once I'm in global configuration mode, 
I'm now going to type in the interface in which I want to secure or the switch port in which I want to secure um, in my network. So I'll type in interface fast ethernet 01 and once I'm in interface configuration mode and I'll, and I'll type in the switch port port security command. Once I type in that command I now need to tell my switch to look for an associated MAC address and basically use this MAC address as the credentials as to who should access this particular switch port. So switch port port security MAC address and now I'm going to, going to put in the MAC address of my printer. So let me just put in my MAC address. Let's just say I was a printer. Basically you could do this with any device that has a network card. Um, so I'll just use my MAC address. So I'm going to um, IP config slash off. Grab my MAC address and any day now I should see a list of my IP configuration. And I'll just use the MAC address that I have on my network card. Come out of here and paste it right there. Now, in configuring Cisco devices and switchboard port security in Cisco switches, we don't use this um, hexadecimal notation that um, native Windows IP configuration utility uses. So it still reads it in hexadecimal, but it's more so expressed in values like this. All right, so you just take out the dashes and put dots um, every every four hexadecimal characters. All right, and I'm going to press enter. And I'll configure switchboard port security for this MAC address on port one. I'm going to put in another. I'm going to put in another command that some persons think is not necessary, but I find sometimes sometimes this command does not work if you do not add another switchboard port security command. Press enter, and we've now configured switchboard port security. Um, pretty simple. Now, in case you're wondering from the beginning how I was able to configure an IP address on the switch. It's good to know that an IP address could never be configured on an individual switch port. Like, I could never go into interface fast Ethernet 01 and say IP address and put in a IP address that I want. It won't work because, well, you can never assign IP addresses to layer 2 links. So what I had to do was assign an IP address to the entire VLAN, or what we call a management-based IP address. This would be an IP address simply used for <laughs> management purposes. For instance, if I wanted to remotely access my switch or if I wanted to copy my running configuration from my switch to a TFTP server, then I'll put an IP address on my switch. I hope this video has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.